us this morning. I want to invite you to sing along with us as we give our praises to the King who's worthy. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air, I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes he is worthy of all the praise. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout to the door, swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on the shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all the praise, even praise, even praise in the highest praise, even praise, even praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is worthy of all the praise. Come on, praise him with your hands this morning, church. Let's declare this. Faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath, I'll praise you anywhere. Faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath, I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is worthy of all the praise. Give him praise, give him praise. In the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise. In the highest, he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all the praise. Oh, I'll praise you anywhere. A mountain, a valley, I know that you're with me. I'll praise you anywhere. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise, church. Yes, Jesus, you're worthy. We're creation, suddenly articulate. With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole echoing his eminence
altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Where every creature finds its inmost melody. chorus one more time. Make it a declaration from your heart. the Lord a big hand this morning. Amen, amen. Oh, come on, let's do it. Let's, let's give him a big hand today. Yes, amen. So right in the heart of worship this morning, we're going to baptize three ladies. I'm so excited today. We've already baptized two young ladies first service. We baptized Delana Johnson and Kaylee Ortiz. And so what an awesome time it was. But uh, you can be seated just for a moment. We'll go back into worship. We're getting ready to baptize Shari Starling, and Destiny Ziegler, and Brandy Weldon. And so we're excited about it. Anytime people ha- are getting baptized, that means that they've given their life to Christ. 
Some of you have given your life to Christ and your next step is baptism. If you've never been baptized, people ask all the time, why should I get baptized? And I say it like this, it's the easiest answer that I know because Jesus did. It's because Jesus did. And so I would say to you today, if you've never been baptized, but you're a Christian, you're giving your life to Christ. Listen, you can give your life to Christ in a closet, in your car, in a shower. You can come to the altar, give your life to Christ. Nobody has to be present but you and the Lord. But when you go into those baptism waters, it's a whole nother ball game. There's a covenant made with you and the church immediately, just like that. There's something powerful that happens because like when they come up out of the water, the symbolism is, the, is their old man stays in the watery grave and they come up a brand new person, come on church. I mean, it's a whole other thing when we're declaring to the world. That's, and that's, and sometimes it seems a little foolish, but we're declaring to the world that we're a Christian now. So every one of these ladies will declare today, I'm a Christian today. I'm going to live my life like the scripture says. I'm going to live my life according to how Jesus lived his life. That, that's, what, that's what it's all about as they declare that this morning. Another beauty of baptism, the symbolism is so strong. As we see it, I, oftentimes I say it's like a, uh, you know, an outward sign of an inner commitment or an inner covenant. It's like my wedding band. Because, see, when I got married and put a wedding band on, it's the outward sign of a covenant that I made with my wife 35 years ago. And baptism is the same. We're saying, Jesus, I'm, I'm, this is happening right now. I'm, I'm, it's so powerful. As a matter of fact, the Scripture would tell us in Matthew 3, verse 16, when Jesus was baptized. So there it is for you. Jesus was baptized. Immediately, he, he went up out of the water. So just like you'll see them all the way fully immersed and coming all the way up out of the water this morning. He, all the way out of the water. And then the scripture says, Behold, the heavens were opened to him, and the Spirit of God descended like a dove. And so we have Jesus in the flesh, Holy Spirit coming down like a dove. And then all of a sudden, the scripture says, A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. We have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together. I believe this morning when these ladies come up out of the water, the Father saying, this is my daughter whom I'm well pleased. For every single one of you today, this is my daughter with whom I'm well pleased. And so when they come up out of the water, church, we want to ex- just erupt in praise because of what God has done so Pastor Johnny, who do we have over here this morning? Yes, well, good morning, church. This is Shari, and I've been having an opportunity to get to know her and some of her family and growth track, and uh, she's just full of Jesus, and she's so excited. Um, it's been a while. Never been baptized, never took this step, wow. so this wow. is a very, very important Come step on, first. Church. So she's like, never took this step, but this is the time. So church family, we want to celebrate, okay? So it's my privilege, my sister, my new friend, to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Destiny, she shares my daughter's name. How awesome is that? Destiny, this is her first time ever being baptized. She's proclaiming to the world today that she is a child of God. First time today. Wow. So wow. church, this is important. Important celebration. I get to celebrate with you. So thank you so much. So it's my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
down in your mouth. Yeah. Are you going to hold your nose? Yeah. All right. All right. This is Brandy. Y'all say hey. Look out there, Brandy. So y'all say good morning, Brandy. All right. All right. Brandy, it is my privilege. And you got some friends up here, too. You see this friend up here looking at There's your baby. There's your baby right there. Look at that. <laughs> Witnessing this. That's awesome. So, Brandy, it's my pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's just stand and celebrate that together. I won't bow to idols. I stand strong. Then I'll be crucified with you Because death is just the doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your suffering Then I'll join you when you rise And when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints My heart will still be singing My song Worship him together.
about today and what the Lord has in store for us. And, hey, I would say to you, don't forget about all the next steps that are, you know, that if you've given your life to Christ and you haven't been water baptized, that's the next step for you. 
just wanted to spend a moment on that. There's, it's so powerful. Never do a baptism that I'm not in tears. Just weeping because it's so powerful. There's something so family oriented about baptism. There's, it's so powerful. He says we're baptized into the body of Christ. And so it's family. Like It's, it's like a family reunion, y'all. I mean, it is. And so it's just so powerful. And so I, I just want to remind you of that this morning as we're getting ready to um, see some announcements from Pat today. But I want to pray for us. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you today. We thank you so much for all you've got for us today. God, I thank you that today, Lord, that we can shout to the Lord. <laughs> You're so good. I love being able to shout to you. I, I love being able to declare your greatness, Father. Lord, I love being able to, uh, Father, just sing about you. And so I thank you so much for this team behind me, God. And Lord, I, I just thank you for every single one of them. And the anointing that's on their lives and the time that they give and pour out, Father God, to be able to lead us in worship week in and week out. Thank you so much for that, Father, today. Lord, I thank you for everybody in, uh, under my voice today, both online and in here. I pray, Holy Spirit, even now, as we've already prayed over this room, over these chairs, over this facility, God, I just pray today, just come in and have your way. Holy Spirit, come in even now and bring peace where peace need, is needed. I pray today, come and bring salvation where salvation's needed. Bring healing where healing's needed. Father, I pray for all of my brothers and sisters all over our region today, in churches, Lord, the county churches and city churches, big churches and small churches, Father, all over our nine county region today, God, that you would just infiltrate them with your power and with the anointing and the word of God would be very powerful. Lord, it would do what it needs to do today as it's shared all over in the body of Christ. We thank you for that today. And Lord, we can't say enough how much we love you and how grateful we are for you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, as you're being seated, tell somebody around you, everyone counts, especially you. Come on, tell a couple of people that. Pay attention to the screens today as Pat gives us some very important announcements. Check it out. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pat Rios, and I serve with our Dream Team. We're so glad you could join us today. Here at DC, our desire is for you to know God, build community, discover purpose, and make a difference. As you entered the building, you were given a worship guide. It has valuable information about DC, upcoming events, and a page to help you take notes. As your church family, we want to stay connected with you, and most importantly, be able to pray for your specific needs. The best way we can stay in touch is through our connection card found in the back cover of the worship guide. Here you can let us know any next steps that you would like to take, such as growth track, water baptism, or serving on our dream team. We also would love for you to let us know on the connection card if you made the decision to commit your life to Jesus today. If this is your first time at Destination Church, we would love for you to let us know that it's your first time here and how we can best serve you using the connection card. If you turn it in at the connections table in the foyer, we have a gift just for you. Each Sunday at 9 a.m., we have Growth Track in DC2. This is a four-part weekly experience that is designed to help you learn who we are as a church, develop healthy habits, discover your design, and use your gifts by serving and being part of our dream team. Next week is step three, discover your design. In this step, you will learn how God wired you by your, using your personality type, spiritual gifts, and passions. Please let us know on your connection card if you're interested in learning more. DC family, don't forget that we're now in season of giving at Destination Church. Be sure to return your Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. Follow the instructions on the card inside to ensure that your box reaches its destination. We're excited to be once again hosting Christmas Eve services here at Destination Church this year. However, since December 24th falls on a Sunday, our Christmas Eve services will be held on that Sunday morning across three services at 8, 9.45, and 11.30. Mark your calendars to join us here at December, on December 24th at one of these three times to celebrate the birth of our King. 
Thank you all once again for joining us this morning. You can find all this information and more on our website at destination-church.org. Stay tuned for a message from one of our missions partners. Heavenly Father, we lift our veterans to you. We thank you for their courage in the face of danger, their resilience in times of adversity, and their commitment to defending our freedoms. We honor them for their dedication and sacrifices, for their willingness to stand on the front lines and their enduring love for our nation. Lord, we ask for your continued protection and blessings upon our veterans. May they find strength in their faith, hope, in their hearts and healing for their wounds. May your grace be with our veterans and their families, offering them the peace that can only come from you. We honor their dedication to our country. We are eternally grateful for their service. Amen. And everybody said, Amen, right? Amen. We do want to honor our veterans today. And if you're a veteran in here and you can, can you please stand? We just want to honor you just for a moment. I always love Veterans Day. I, it's been a weekend for me. I've been telling people happy Veterans Day since like Thursday, I think. But come on, let's give it up for our veterans this morning all over the room. Amen, amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Oh, you can do better than that, church. Yes. Yeah. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your service. We're so excited about it. Our praying for you and uh, just a, a little way to say thanks to you today. I want to remind you, um, we had uh, the Warriors Journey with us last year and they gave us these Bibles and we still have some. We've been giving them out all morning long for, for veterans. Um, it's the Warfighter Study Bible. And so um, you can pick one up if you're a veteran or if you want to send one to a veteran. Or <clears throat> We had people asking if they could send them their people that are all over the place and so I say yes and uh, they're out there on the connection table just talk to someone um, it's our privilege to be able to with uh, with the Warriors journey to be able to give these away and so remember that if you're a veteran today wanted to let you know that as well as a couple of things uh, Pat didn't know and didn't she do a good job y'all I'm just so proud of her but what she didn't know is that uh, Turkey on the go is fully funded come on give yourself a big hand and um, it's fully funded. So on Thanksgiving Day, we'll serve 1,200 meals to people all over our region. And uh, we need a couple of diff- we still need a, a couple of different um, worker types, if I can use that word. All right, uh, we need some people to work the, the grills with us. We need about six more people to make this happen. It takes about 12 people to, to make it work, and so about six more. You can sign up at the table between the double doors when you go out there. Um, the other thing is we need about 50 drivers, and we have about 40 drivers, and so we would love, love, love it if you could sign up uh, to be a driver. I love just going with my whole family personally and giving out the boxes and getting to talk to people and serving that we're serving. And so um, if you don't, you know, we'd love, love to have you on, on Thanksgiving morning. It takes somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour of your time. It varies as to where you're going, all right? Just so you know that, but we would love to have you that morning. And the other thing I wanted to say, I've been saying this for a couple of weeks, but we have, I know that people are in one of, you know, three weeks of services and all kind of stuff, but the staff and I want to thank you so much for Pastor's Appreciation Month. It was absolutely amazing, blew us away. Thank you so much for cards, for letters, for gifts, for all the stuff that you gave us. Uh, we can't say thank you enough. I want to make sure that you know that today as well. But uh, so again, uh, don't forget when we break here in a couple of minutes, uh, just make sure and, and you can go sign up for these different things. Let's go ahead and stand up this morning as we get ready for to, to meet and greet page there you can give in person a couple of different ways you can give out in the foyer with the giving kiosk you can text to tithe you can give through the, our mobile app and or you can give in these gray and black boxes that are all over not just in the sanctuary but all over our building we call our cheer boxes amen and uh, so this morning let's pray today father we thank you for this day father i just ask today that you just come and minister to us i thank you so much for your people i thank you for their generosity Lord, I thank you that 
Lord, that 1,200 meals are taken care of for, because of generosity, the gift of, of giving. And uh, I just ask today you continue, Lord, uh, to move through your people. I pray you would instruct every single person how they should give today. Lord, I thank you that if we give according to your word, your scripture is very clear. You'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing we can't contain it. And so, God, we thank you for that today. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, you got about two minutes, and we'll be right back in here getting ready for a brand new, uh, it's part two of a brand new series. Come on. Good morning again, Destination Church. So good to be with you. Can we give our online family a big round of applause this morning? So good to have you online. We're so grateful you're with us. So we are in a series that we started last week called Emotions, and we're excited about it. And um, everybody in here, I believe, is affected probably by all these different things that we talk about in one place of their life. And uh, so we're looking at a few things, uh, three uh, topics. We're looking at combating loneliness. We talked about that last week. This week we're talking about conquering anxiety. Next week we'll talk about choosing joy. But before we go there, I want to let you know that our El Salvador team is back. They made it back safely. Then I'm sure we're going to hear some good testimony from them. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yes, yes, yes. It's always good when teams go out there and, and, uh, so, and come back in. So thank you so much for praying for them. And also thank you so much for making a way for them to go. Well, as you can tell, I'm not up here by myself today. I have my oldest daughter with me. I have Hannah with me. She's going to help me today as we look at, at uh, conquering anxiety. And uh, it's a big deal. And so as we look at emotions this morning, I just want to let you know this. An emotion is a feeling such as happiness, love, fear, anger, or hatred, and so I can go ahead and ask the question, how many of you had an emotion this week? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> Hands going up everywhere, right? Yeah, and uh, so we've had a couple of those, right? But uh, I like it because the definition goes on and says, which could be caused by the situation that you're in, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning <clears throat> as we look at anxiety, 
or the people you are with. You know, there was a reason we did this series like this. It's because we're just a few days out from Thanksgiving, somebody. You know, you got all those family members coming in, and you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and we're trying to help you out. We're trying to keep so you can conquer this stuff, right? Combat it, conquer it. And then, um, you know, also we have Christmas right behind that. And so we're working on these different things. So um, this is my oldest daughter again. This is Hannah. And so, Hannah, tell us a little bit about yourself today. Hi, I'm Hannah. <laughs> um, I am married to Jacob. He's right here on the front row. We've been married this month. On the 22nd will be nine years for us. Yes, and we have a little girl. She is five. Her name is Lindley, and she's, he wanted me to make sure and say this last service, but she is his grandchild. <laughs> yes. I was trying to settle my anxiety. He now. went back to Lindley. I did at the have end. to go back to it. I want to make sure we got there. So Lindley is his first grandchild. Um, she's really funny. And um, I have a bachelor's in social work and a master's in social work. Um, my focus on my master's was very clinical, so I love working in the clinical setting, which um, not hospital setting, but like private practice. Um, and I currently am at a private practice, but before that I worked at a child advocacy and rape crisis center. So that means that I worked with children that had allegedly been abused and adults that were sexual assault survivors. I did that for four years. Um, I worked in five different counties with that. Um, now I work in a private practice and I work with children, um, not little kids. I do not, little kids, I have a little kid, but they're not my thing. Um, she is, she is, but other than her, you can keep your little kids. Um, <laughs> I like middle school and up and I, I really enjoy working with moms, young moms people that are coming into that college or new marital phase, just people in new transitions. I, I enjoy working with that. But my current favorite that I've recently discovered is couples. I really enjoy the conflict. I like to see the resolution come, but I, I like getting in there with them and, and really working through that conflict. So couples are my new thing that I am enjoying. And here at the church, I serve on the worship team, and my husband and I lead a small group, and we've done that for probably five years or more. So uh, we're going to talk about it at the end, but can you give us some ins uh, just a little bit of insight on Anchored in Wellness? Where are you guys out of all that? Yep. So our office is in Jessup. I do see, and, and my boss as well, we both see a few people here in Waycross, um, or in, I guess in Blackshear. And we have our, our private practice side, and then we, that works mostly counseling, um, medicine maintenance, that kind of thing. And then we also have a nonprofit side that works with substance use. Um, all the things that go along with that. So we have certified addiction counselors, peer counselors. We have grants on that side of things, too. And we're in um, mostly Jessup, and we kind of branch out from there. All righty. Just so you know that, you can type it in online. And, uh, but uh, if you would like to know anything about Anchored after we talk today. But want to let you know, too, to this morning as we look at this, I, I told first service, because uh, it's a little bit of a different topic, this is a little bit of a different way to do it. But one of the podcasts that I follow, and almost weekly now with Lisa Turkrist and her team, she has a team, and it's called Therapy and Theology, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. And so one of the things that's on my heart, and you'll hear about it in a minute even more so, is that we are able to you know, be healthy, not just spiritually and physically, but also emotionally. And so what Lisa has done with her team of, at Therapy and Theology, she has a, a, a theologian there with her and she has her uh, personal counselor there with her and, and man it's, it's absolutely amazing and so it's a little takeoff today for us we got th uh, therapy and theology right here with you and uh, I say that to say this today as we look about uh, talk about anxiety for a believer if you're a Christian in here today good health watch this good mental health begins and ends with Jesus I'm going to say it again Good mental health begins and ends with Jesus. In other words, we talk about Jesus being the center all the time. And so if you're, you know, if Jesus is not, you know, if Jesus isn't in your life or he's not at the center of your life, then th that's step one today. That, that's like, you know, stepping in and, and so and looking at it. But so we're starting with a passage of scripture that kind of encompasses everything we're going to do today. Tell us about Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right, so we, you see the picture here. He says, do not be anxious about anything. So you're like, my goodness, what are we talking about then? God can just take this thing and, and do whatever he wants to do. Yes, he can. But there's, we, there's an us side to this as well. It says every situation... 
He tells us to pray. Petition, it's even going beyond just praying. Uh, with thanksgiving, so there's a grateful heart. There's a lot going on right here. After all this, then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ. And so we can live a very fruitful life in Christ. As this is, There's a lot here, so we're going to look at it. Remember, we're talking about conquering it today. We want, we want to try to conquer anxiety, which is a big, big deal. Hannah, I'll tell you that. That word conquer means to overcome to take control by use of military force is how we usually see this word conquer used. And, but today, what we want to talk about is taking control of our anxiety. Taking control. How do I do this? What does it look like? So give us a good definition of anxiety this morning. So if we're talking about what I would consider a situational anxiety, it would be a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. And then more of the clinical anxiety side would be a mental condition characterized by excessive apprehensiveness about real or perceived threats, typically leading to avoidance behaviors and often to physical symptoms such as increased heart rate and muscle tension. So most of us have experienced this before, anxiety at some point. You, you know, we're going to tell you a little bit about um, the types of anxiety as we do, but we always kick things off with, uh, with a soul tattoo because we want you to walk out of here with one thought today, really. You know, as you listen to everything, if there was one thought you could walk out of here today, I believe it would be this. Last week, as we looked at loneliness, we said that it was, we're better, say it with me, church, together, together right? We're better together. But this week, it's a little different, and it's anxiety. Don't let the diagnosis define your identity. I'll say it again. Anxiety, don't let the diagnosis define your identity. How many times have we allowed a diagnosis to define who we are? Immediately, we've told we've got, and I don't have to say anything, but we've got X, and then all of a sudden, we are X. Yep. But listen to me today. Anxiety. Don't let the diagnosis define your identity. Your identity, we've learned this all year, is in Jesus Christ. And so tell me about two types of anxiety, Hannah. So if we're going to simplify it, so this, I'm not talking about all the different diagnoses that go under anxiety, but if we're just simplifying it, it would be situational and clinical. Those would be the two that we're talking about today. So clinical is the one that has all the other diagnoses, but um, situational would be more like me today. I'm, I'm anxious because I do not normally speak in front of a crowd. <laughs> um, this is not my typical thing. I love one-on-one or one-on-twos, sometimes even one-on-threes, but a crowd is not my thing. So I would feel anxious, right? My stomach hurts a little bit. My heart has been beating. I have been sweating. And so that would be situational. Clinical is more when it's in an elongated period or over time um, just because of different things that we've experienced. And so um, with clinical anxiety, I've told you in this series, I'd be very vulnerable to you, very transparent with you. So about 18 months ago, I was diagnosed with uh, clinical anxiety. And so what did it look like? And so, uh, you know, it looked like this for me. I immediately, because I didn't have a clue, because this is what I thought. I thought every day since I've been a little boy that I wake up in the morning and that uh, that everything was going by me at about 100 miles an hour, like I was on a train with, with windows, and everything was going by me at about 100 miles an hour that I was about to do that day. I would even catch that the night before. I would start seeing these things at about 100 miles an hour, just going by, going by, going by. And so then all of a sudden, um, what I realized was that's not how everybody else is. I started asking questions, and nobody else is, is, has all that going on unless they have, you know, anxiety. Like, it's, it's really something that goes on in your life. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what do I do? What do I do? And so this is what I did. I just, I'm just being very transparent with you today. I got spiritual help, first and foremost. My pastor. I went to my pastor and said, hey, something's going on. I went to other leaders. I was like, hey, guys, something's going on. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm at this place in life. I got these things going on. And I just feel like I can't stop what this is. And then I got medical help from my physician. Because I, 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 believe, I believe in my, you know, my, my, my Jesus. I believe in that. But then I got medical help from my physician. And then I got emotional help from my therapist. And so I'm hitting all three things. Not just two. Not just one. I, I, I believe it's very important. I'm, I'm all about my spiritual life. But hear me. I'm all in. I'm all about my, my physical life and, and how I do things. I was running 100 mile races, thought it was just normal for all this craziness that was going on in my head, all these things going on. And then all of a sudden I realized, hey, something's wrong here. And so, and then I, I went to, you know, as I went to my pastor and then my physician and to the therapist, and she was like, oh, this is what we call anxiety. 
I was like, really? All right. For all these years. You know, 55 years or whatever. I've, I've been living like this. Didn't realize it. What do I do? And so then she put me on, you know, on, on a track to, to start getting healthy with my emotion, in my emotions. And so as we look at it today, we're going to ask, we're going to look at two questions on anxiety because this is a big deal in the church right now. Is anxiety sin? So yeah. what do you think, Hannah? Well, before that, I kind of want to look at that graphic. Oh, yeah. I forget about the graphic every time. Um, and so this was, I just loved this because I think a lot of the time in the church, in the South, we think that we talk through like anxiety is a sin and that we shouldn't feel all these things. And so when the truth really is that scripture never tells us to stuff our emotions down, I don't see that. If you see it, please come to me and show that to me. I would love to know. Um, I mean, sincere, because I just don't see it. And if you do, you no. see that. So what I do see, though, is it actually says for us to cast our burdens onto him. On. So to me, that would be that we're supposed to actually verbalize what we're experiencing to the Lord, to our community, which could be your small group, your close people, your family. Um, and I also think that he desires to hear from us. The, it, the scripture talks so much about how he wants to be close to us and how he's close to the brokenhearted and all the things. And so I think that this was just a great visual. It's for, from Soul Shepherding. If any of my teenagers that have Instagram, they're a really good one to follow because they have a lot of good just scriptural yeah, stuff. They help me, Soul Shepherding. I've been using them now for about 18 months, working with them. They're great guys. I, I, I love all the stuff they put out. Yeah. So two questions. Number one, is anxiety sin? I love your answer on this. So I go back to, I would say no. Um, my initial answer is no, because in Mark 14, 32, and then Luke 22, 39 through 44, it's the same situation, just they're different versions. But they actually say that Jesus, not the disciples, not his followers, that Jesus felt agony. In Luke, he says agony, and then in Mark, it says that he felt distressed and troubled. So if Jesus was able to feel those things, when I talk to my clients every day about their anxiety, what they talk about is feeling distressed, troubled, in agony, all of the things. And so if he was allowed to feel those things, then I don't understand how we could say that that would be a sin for us to feel those things. I think the sin comes in later on when we choose not to heal, and that's something we'll continue to talk about. But I do not believe that the actual emotions that you're experiencing when you're feeling anxious are a sin, because if Jesus was perfect... So that means he never sinned, and he experienced those emotions, and it's okay for us to feel that. It's just what we're doing with those emotions later. I love how the message tra uh, paraphrase puts it. He says that Jesus plunged into a sinkhole of dreadful agony. And uh, if you <laughs> see that really in Mark intense. 14, and if you deal with anxiety, um, you know exactly what that's like um, because anxiety can lead to depression. Anxiety can uh, br actually bring fear on at high levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was just, that caught my, I was like, oh my goodness, that's pretty intense. He plunged into a sinkhole of dreadful agony. And uh, so, so then, so, you know, don't think that ang is anxiety a sin. We're going to talk about it a little, but is anxiety doubting God? So again, feeling the emotions is not doubting God. We, we saw Jesus exhibit this in the scriptures that we just talked about. But it's what we do next. And so if we choose not to follow through with what the Lord has for us, which would typically be like healing, confronting someone that we have an issue with that's causing us to feel anxious, if we're not doing what he knows that what we know he's called us to do, then yes, that can be considered down in God because we're taking the control away from him and we're trying to control the situation instead of allowing him to work through us in those situations. So yes, it could be doubting God, but the emotions are not. It's what you do next. So we see Jesus and Paul talk about this a little mm -hmm. bit. Jesus says, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. And anybody in the house know anything about Sunday scaries? <laughs> Have you ever heard that term before? Like you're already in Monday before Sunday's over. And uh, so that, that's what Jesus is talking about. And I experienced that for years and years and years. Never knew what it was. Didn't know I was so anxious in my spirit and anxious in my emotions um, but, you know, but it was because that I was allowing anxiety to have more control over me than what, you know, I had over it. It's basically what was going on. And so now through, here I am, 18 months again, I've said it over and over again. I wish that, you know, for the first 50 some odd years of my life, I would have known this. All I could think about is the amount of people I could have helped, all these things. But what I know is God's timing is perfect timing. Mm -hmm. And then Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. So we see these things. But at the same time, um, it, it, it's obvious that to be anxious, you know, we, we could see it lead into it. And that's what we'll talk about in, in just a moment. So again, anxiety, don't let the diagnosis define your identity. It's really big. So we're going to look at four thoughts today. 
And um, as, as we open this up, we're going to list them out for you real quick, and then we're going to open them up for you. So um, as we look at these today, uh, I want to thank Gospel Coalition. These guys, um, there was an article that was written on this topic. Hannah had already uh, spoken on this before. And as we looked at it, we merged those two together. I'm so grateful for them and everything they offer the body of Christ. But, and so as we look at these four thoughts, number one is... Um, that uh, about anxiety, it's a God-given emotional response. And so what are we going to say? Anxiety is for our protection. So it's a God-given emotional response, but it's for our protection. We'll open these up in a minute for you. Number two is it's a disordered physiological response that's not sinful. So anxiety is clinical. Number three would be this. It's a natural consequence of sin. Anxiety is for conviction. We're going to open that one up. That's a big one. And then a sinful response. Anxiety is a sinful response to God's guidance. Anxiety is a lack of faith. And so as we look at this, the way we see it, one and two will go together pretty good, and three and four will go together as well. Remember today, anxiety, don't let the diagnosis define your identity. And so talk to me about, Hannah, anxiety is for our protection. This is a big one for everybody in the room today. Yeah, so I, I mean, the Lord created us, right? So he gave us our brains and he gave us all the feelings that we have. And so to me, when I start to feel that, I kind of start asking, okay, what is my brain trying to tell me? What is my body trying to tell me? Which same, like, what's the Lord trying to show me sometimes too, you know? Um, is there something dangerous that's happening now, or which would be fear, or is there something dangerous that is in the future or coming up, which would be technically anxiety? A lot of time in my setting, I just we use them interchangeably sometimes because they feel very similar in our bodies. Um, and then my the best example I could give of it being for our protection is if how many people have ridden a roller coaster or the fairs in town, like a fair ride. I'm not good with measurements, but like if you're going literally, you go up the roller coaster ride and then you're shooting down hundreds of feet in the air and your brain, you feel all the emotions of anxiety, right? Your brain's trying to tell you, hey, something's wrong. We're not supposed to be going this fast <laughs> face down. And so it would be for your protection. Your body's just trying to say like, hey, ears up, red flag, something's not quite right here. And so it doesn't, that's, that's not sinful when we feel those things. That's actually something the Lord gave us to feel that. Um, so that's what it's for. So it's basically what we're saying in is it's a God-given emotional response for survival. Yes. Um, it's kind of like health, like fear, like a healthy fear. A healthy there, fear. We have a healthy fear right. as well. And it, it, we would rarely consider that to be sinful. But then, and thought number, so one and two go together very well. Thought number two is that anxiety is clinical. Tell us a little bit about that. This is what you do every day. Yeah, so um, clinical anxiety can come from lots of different things. And I didn't say this earlier, but clinical anxiety most of the time comes from some type of chemical imbalance or our um, pathways in our brain are unhealthy. They, we've created these unhealthy pathways, for, pathways basically. And so... A lot of the time we have this over time. So if you've been in an abusive relationship or you were abused as a child or even as a kid, if you grew up in a home without food, then a lot of the time you have needs that weren't met and so you become an anxious human. And so that's where the clinical diagnosis comes from is because it's an elongated period of time that you were, your body was under stress that we weren't created for. Um, and that can look like a lot of different things, but typically it comes from abusive situations or needs not being met. These imbalances can be caused by unsolved um, situational anxiety as well as your genetics. So there's, a, there's new research right now. Um, they've been doing it. Doc, Doc Amin is what he calls himself. But he's been doing research on this for years, and he does brain scans. And it's really neat. Um, he's doing scans of our brains, and like he can show you basically you struggle with ADHD, you struggle with anxiety, depression, or you had a trauma. But what's happening is he's seeing those in a parent's brain and then he can go and scan the child's brain and you see the same thing in their brain because the parent chose not to heal from it um, or they didn't know how to heal from it not just chose that they didn't know how to heal from it and so as a mom that makes me want to be so healed so that you know if we were to have another child one day I don't want to pass those things on and so parents or people that haven't had children yet if you can go ahead and heal from that from your clinical stuff you'll see generational curses being broken and Amen. we'll have more blessings instead of curses and I think we'll see a new generation of people too if we would heal from our stuff. Yeah, one of the things that I saw happen with me is um, that got me to where I knew something wasn't right was the persistent anxious thoughts, like not just one day, but every day mm -hmm. and then all day. And it was way longer than six months. I've already said that. But it would also interfere. Um, it got to the point where it was interfering with daily functioning um, for me. And then um, I was also having trouble sleeping. And so one of the things that's happened over the last 18 months, I've made many shifts in my life. I've done a lot of things. I've, I've been very diligent 
with my physical body, with spirituality, all, all those things as well. But my mental health has been big. Um, we've set boundaries. Like Renee and I have set mega boundaries in this area that have helped me greatly. And, um, and you know, the other thing it's done is opened up some creative. You've, you told me it was going to happen, but it's opened up some creative pathways that have been just phenomenal. Um, and I'm thinking about things that I never thought of. I'm seeing things in Scripture that I never dreamed of. I mean, it's just on and on it goes because all those things that were trauma-related and the other things that had happened, they're, 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 they're null. They're gone. And so um, I, I just, just it's, it's, it's just been powerful. Yeah, so your brain's not trying to have to work in overdrive once you start to heal. It's not focused on all those unhealthy pathways and how do I fix that and all the things because they're healed and fixed. And so it opens up new areas that you're able to, to have more creative thoughts or you're able to actually focus on your family instead of feeling like you can't just sit and spend time with them. You're able to be where you're at. Since we're talking about clinical just for a second too, I, I was thinking through, um, it wasn't an issue for me. You just got to know me. Um, I'm, when I'm in, I'm in. I'm all in. And so I knew that I needed this. But I know some people, because I had just heard of growing up and all that, all my, you know, oh, I can't go to a therapist. It's going to be weird laying on a couch. And all. That's <laughs> not how it works, y'all. I just want to be real with you today. It's just like me and Hannah are doing right here. It's, it's like I do this. have a couch. She does have a couch. <laughs> and I do have some people that like to lay on it. <laughs> that's you. That's them. But I just need you to know, I want to break the stigma because it's so strong in this region, in this area. What if? What if we could get healed of anxiety? What if we could get healed of depression? What if we could get healed of all these things by allowing ourselves to be healed spiritually, physically, and emotionally? Mm -hmm. The big what if is what I'm after. And so that's why we're doing this as, as well and opening this thing up so we can minister effectively here. So, um, so the other two go hand in hand as well. So not only are we looking at that anxiety is for our protection and it's clinical, but it's also anxiety is for conviction. This is a big one. Tell me about it. So I was kind of hitting at this earlier, but in my opinion, when we, need, when we know that we have a journey of healing that we're supposed to be taking and we choose not to, that is sinful. Because if Jesus, if our goal is to be more like him, and the scripture is very clear about that, Romans 8, 29, for God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among brothers and sisters. He wanted Jesus to have community, right? And so I think that if our goal is to be more like Jesus, and we're choosing not to heal, then we're choosing not to be like Jesus. And that goes against everything the scripture shows us. And so it would be sinful, and that's where our conviction comes from. So anxiety is for conviction. If you're doing things like cheating on your spouse, or lying to your spouse about money, or you're a teenager and you're sneaking out at night and not telling your parents, and you start feeling all those butterflies, you start sweating every time you see the person that you're lying to, you, you are skimping on your time at work and lying about that and mm. you see your boss and you wow. freak out every time you start sweating heart heart palpitations can't eat all those things that's your conviction um it's it's rising up in you because and that's it feels like anxiety right but anxiety is for our conviction as well because it's teaching us like hey this isn't okay and you need to turn from this and we choose when we choose not to turn from it and not to be more like jesus we are sinning so the other piece of that puzzle is holy spirit jesus himself said in john 16 8 when he comes the holy spirit he will convict the world of its sin. Mm -hmm. So it's the Holy Spirit. It's God. It's God convicting you of sin. And so if I'm not going to give it away, then guess what? It's going to keep coming sure. at me. And so if I'm not going to turn it over to the Lord, right? Ask forgiveness of what I have going on in my life. Talk to some other people so that I can be healed, you know, according to James 5, right? Yep. And so, and of God's right, you know, he's going to convict the world of sin, of God's righteousness, and of the coming judgment. So all these things are working in unison to help us, mm -hmm. not to hurt us. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it could be a conviction there where anxiety, the anxiety is working on you. The, the, and, uh, but the fourth type today that we're looking at is anxiety is a lack of, this is strong, but it's a lack of faith. Yes. So to me, when I think of a lack of faith, I often think of trying to control situations. So I think a good question to ask yourself is, am I trying to control a situation that isn't mine to control? Mm. Am I supposed to be handing this over to the Lord? 
and people will say, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that this works like it's supposed to and that so-and-so gets to where they're supposed to or that these bills are paid. But really what we need to be doing is planning, more of like an outline, because planning brings peace, right? Planning is wisdom. Planning, you know, everything might not go as exactly like I think it should, but control is when we get angry that things aren't going exactly like we think that they should, and we're also taking it from the Lord. Planning allows the Lord to be in there. It allows community. So like if my husband and I have a meeting and we talk through our calendar for the month or I say to him, like, hey, this is what we've got going on, that's us planning. That's us doing that together. I'm not taking control of everything. And so... Planning is wisdom. It brings peace and order, and control often comes from difficulty with trust or unhealed wounds. So a lot of time when we're trying to control things, it's because we've been hurt in the past. We've had past traumas that we've chosen not to heal from um, or we didn't know how to heal from. The other thing with control is it's often from fear. So fear is often at that root of control. We're fearful that we're not measuring up. We're fearful to, uh, that we're going to be lonely, or we're fearful of failing, and so we just want to control it instead of allowing the Lord to work through us and help us plan through those things. And in Psalm, it says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? So I think we have to take this. Uh, Romans also tells us, because we're dealing with faith here, and uh, some of you have been, you know, working this thing for many years. You've been a Christian for many years. The scripture is very clear in Romans 14, uh, 23. It tells us, whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. And so we got to make sure here that as we're working through this thing that we're continuing to give it back over to God. That's why if you pay attention on Sunday mornings, I've been giving anxiety to God for 18 months every single Sunday. I pin it. You can look at mine. It's right over there. I'm not ashamed to tell you that. I pin it to the cross every single week because I'm, I'm a long way from where I was, but I don't know that I'm totally healed. I, I, know, I know I'm not. And, and so I'm just letting you know today, but by faith, I'm believing that I'm going to be. And I'm a lot better off than where I was when I started. And so, you know, uh, I just want you to know that today. This is, th this is giving this stuff up to God, trusting Him with my healing, mm -hmm. trusting Him with what He's going to, uh, you know, what He's going to do in my life. And so as we look at it today. Can I say something on yeah, that? Yeah, go, go ahead. I want to say sometimes people with anxiety, depression, different mental health things, they kind of think like, okay, I have this diagnosis and I'm stuck yeah. here, but that's actually not true. Your brain can really and truthfully rewire itself. It is one of the coolest organs in our whole body. And that's what I was talking about earlier with those neural pathways. We can create new ones. It takes time, and that's why counseling is work. It's not something that that's you just right. come in two times, three times, and then you're done. It is work. I've, I've been at my office almost three years now, and I have people that I'm just now seeing them truly healing in those deep places, but it's because they've done the work. But it takes time because it took time to get to where you're at. That's right. You didn't just all of a sudden have some experience unless it was one traumatic experience. That absolutely can do it. But most of the time, it's over time that these things happen. And then you've created these new, new pathways. But we can shut those pathways down and go back to those healthy ones that the Lord put in us from the beginning. You, you can heal from it. And we have seen people be healed That's overnight. Absolutely we have right. seen it happen quickly. And the Lord can do what he wants to do, <clears throat> how he wants to do it. We give him free reign to do that. That's right. That's why I keep saying over and over again, you know, uh, about what the Lord wants to do in our lives. And so, but we're trying to give you some tools. We're all about tools at Destination Church. I want to give you tools, and this is one of those tools. So how do I know what type that I'm dealing with? This is a hard question, um, <laughs> but I always want to start out with well, Psalm 139, 14. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And if we can look at ourselves through the lens that the Lord looks at us through, I think it would help us to see things from his perspective instead of being so down on ourselves and trying to figure it all out. We can't do it on our own. Um, I think that group is super important, and that could be small groups here at church. It could be your friend groups. If they're healthy and they're teaching you scripture and talking through scripture with you, um, I think that it's, it's super important to do it like that, but it's hard to do it by yourself. We can't do that because we can't always see ourselves for who the Lord's created us to be. Sometimes it takes somebody else speaking into us. So it's hard to know what type you're dealing with until you really seek it out. But I think it matters, and we're about to close with your four things that I've made so brilliant that you've come up with to help people. But we need to search our hearts. So if you're a Christian in here today and you're struggling with this, I would say search your heart. This is what I had to do. You need to examine your emotions to determine whether... It, you know, whether our own anxiety is something we can't control or if it's connected to sinful behavior. So if you've got sin going on in your life and you're wondering why there's um, anxiety, you know, you need to go ahead and address that. And Hey, you know, give it to the Lord as well, right? So remember that today because remember the thought process, right? Anxiety, don't let the diagnosis define your identity, right? So as we're working on our anxiety, I've been doing this for a while now, so I, I never saw these four things until you showed them to me, but 
Uh, talk to me about number one. So number one is, am I listening to truth? And very basic here, but truth is scripture. Um, and that also means that the people that you're allowing, and we'll talk about this in a second, but the people that you're allowing to pour into you, are they also coming at you from the lens of scripture? Or is it some other thought processes that don't align with who you know the Lord's called you to be? In Psalm 37, 5, it says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. And so if you listen to him and trust in him, he's going to act on your behalf. Jesus also said, we say it a lot around here, but Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and uh, say it with me, church. Life. Life, right? He's the truth. Jesus is the truth. So as you spend time in his word, that was one of the ways that I figured out something wasn't right, <laughs> was through scripture and through the Lord revealing, hey, something, something's not right here. Yeah. And uh, so, um, that, so we definitely, are you listening to the truth? Or, and uh, will you will, are you willing to listen to other people that are, that are trying to, to minister to you as well. I think that's another way that we could definitely hear the truth. Yeah. Uh, Holy Spirit would love to reveal the truth mm -hmm. to you in whatever you're dealing with. Number two would be, so we're big about it here, build community. Am Talk I to in me. community? Um, and so this looks like, are you sharing your burdens? Do you have accountability? Are you in friendship? And I think that one thing we forget a lot of time is, so today we are talking about the person that struggles with anxiety, but sometimes we forget that there's usually a person supporting that person come that's on, struggling with on. anxiety. So if you're the support person, because like anxiety is not something that I struggle with except for on a situational basis. Um, I get distracted really easy, but I don't necessarily struggle with anxiety, <laughs> right? But I, when I'm supporting someone that struggles with anxiety, I come to them with truth, but also gentleness. And so I have to make sure, are they in a good place for me to accept what I'm about to say? And if I'm saying it, I'm not being accusatory. Because if we're accusatory towards our people that we love and that are struggling, they're going to shut down and they're never going to talk to you about it again. And so if I'm not approachable and tender and loving, just like Jesus was, um, then they're not going to want to talk to me about what they're struggling with. And they're also not going to receive if I say like, hey, I really think you could benefit from some counseling or some medicine or getting in some small groups or something like that. They're not going to hear that because I'm being mean. Um, and so I think in, in Galatians 6, 1, it talks about sharing our burdens, but it also says that we do that with gentleness and in love. Yeah, I know for, uh, for Renee and I on this piece of the puzzles, we're talking about community. Um, it's opened up a whole new uh, j just a, a whole new world for us, uh, being able to, uh, for her to be able to speak into my life. She always thought I was angry at her, but it wasn't I was angry at her. I would wake up every morning because it was that the world was going by me like this, and I knew what I had to get done. And so she always thought that that was the issue. So we, here we have lived some 33 and a half years of our life. She thinking every morning I'm angry at her. I was never once angry at her in the morning when I got up. I told you all a week before last, I call her beautiful every morning, right, when I get up. And so that was not the case at all. It was just that I had this thing going on, and now these here I am 18 months later. I just want to let you know something today. I've helped a lot of people in these eight, last 18 months because I've been very vocal about this. People come sit in my office. I've been very vocal about this. I've had people say, man, you're, you're too transparent. No, 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 no. I want to see people get healed. Amen. And so if, that's, if it's going to take my story to help you get healed, I, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. So many men, we don't, want to, we don't want to admit that there's something going on, and and reality is, man, we, we, it, it's time to open. If we're going to get healed and we're going to see our families healed and our kids walk beyond this and move out from under, then we have to be able to, to press in right here. It has been a joy these last 18 months to share my story, to help people grab a hold of this thing, and to see people getting healthy spiritually, physically, and emotionally. So community is a big, big thing here. Uh, the scripture, we looked at it last week when we were looking at loneliness Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out. Everybody say, reach out. Reach out. Come on, say it like you mean it. Reach, reach out. out, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who falls alone is in real trouble. And I don't, I don't want to see people fall alone. We want to help you. So the third one, uh, it's a big deal. Talk to me about it. What am I allowing in? So... We talked about Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, my prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we, whatever we're allowing in, we're hoping would bring peace, right? But then also in Matthew 6, 19 through 24, I'm going to read the whole thing. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. 
No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And so when I, a lot of people, when they talk about the scripture, I've always heard them talk about kind of the money side of things. But truthfully, in the world we live in today, like, yes, money is a big deal. But also, we allow so much in when we're scrolling or we're listening to videos on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. When we're, when we're allowing these things in, that's not scriptural a lot of the time. There are some really great people on Instagram that are sharing lots of scripture, and I love those people, and they, I keep them on my feed, right? But when we're allowing the things that are so negative into our lives, that's not what the Lord has called us to be watching and listening to. And so I teach clients a lot of the time, and I know this is so simple, but there's unfollow and mute buttons on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those things for a reason. Um, I struggle with like, oh, but if I unfriend them or I unfollow them, they'll know. Well, on Instagram, you can mute them and they will never know. And on Facebook, you can unfollow them and they will never know. You can still be their friend. Right. So you're not creating conflict, but you are setting boundaries for yourself. And so I know that how simple that sounds, but I can't tell you the amount of freedom that brings me sometimes that like I'm safe and that boundary is there and I don't have to keep looking at that. And you can even do a trial run. Some of them are like, you can do this for 30 days. And so then you see like, <laughs> did this help me? And if it helps you keep on doing it, nothing wrong with that. The other thing is our, our music. What kind of music are we allowing in? And I'm not, I'm not against like secular music. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if you're having a really depressed day, why are you listening to music that's just going to make you more sad and more anxious? Why? Why would you do that? Why not listen to something happy that's bringing those chemicals back up and taking you back to a healthy space? Um, our friends, you know, when our friends are speaking to us, we're taking that in. We're bringing that in into our ears and our heart. And so if they're not coming from what we said earlier, a place of truth, which is the scripture, then they're probably not who we should be allowing to speak into our lives. Um, and then our TV. I'm not a news person. I have very few news things that I follow because it does cause me to feel really down and negative. I hear so much sadness and negativity all day long in my job that I don't really want to go home and scroll my happy Instagram feed and see all the sad things. Now, I do go to those certain pages to make sure that I know a little bit about what's going on or if I'm being really transparent, I'll just straight up ask my husband because he usually knows. Um, or my brother will send us really cool stuff sometimes and so that's helpful for me. But other than that, I try really hard because it's not healthy for me. It takes me to a dark place. I have other people in my life that it doesn't do that for them and that's good because then they can talk to me about it in a positive way. And so I think that's, that's it. But it was, what are we allowing in all the way around? So am I listening to the truth? Am I in community? What am I allowing in? And the fourth one is, do I need professional help? So I said this in first service. You know, I grew up in a home where my parents were very clear that everybody needs counseling at some point in their lives. Um, there's no shame in that. And so my immediate answer is, yes, you always need professional help at some point. So that can look like so many different things. I think that in order for us to sit and be able to change those neural pathways and regain the chemical balances that we need where they need to be at, we may need counseling. We may need medicine. We may need help. Just, to, you know, whether it's substance use counseling, maybe you need that. And maybe it's not actual mental health type counseling. Maybe it's substance use stuff or I don't know. But the, yes, we need professional help. It could also look like we talked earlier about food. Sometimes maybe you need to hire a personal trainer to help you in the gym or a nutritionist that can help you get your protein and your carbs and all those things right. Because when we're not feeling good, our brain's not working like it should. And so if the chemicals aren't aligned all the way through, something's not right. When I have a client first come see me at their intake, one of my questions that I almost always ask is, when's the last time you went to see your primary care provider? Yes. Um, for females, sometimes I will ask about OBGYN just because of the hormone panels that they do there. But I always refer them back. And if it's been over six months, we send them back. We say, hey, before you come to your next session, like, I think you really should probably do this because if your vitamin D is low or any of the other chemicals that we have in our body, that can also make you feel depressed. And that's the type of professional help you might need. Um, yeah. And exercise, I think it's always a super helpful thing. So the other thing that we would see in scripture on this, and this is what happened to me, is um, in Proverbs eleven fourteen, the scripture would tell us where there's no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. And for me, it was the multitude of counselors. I, I had my pastor, I had my physician, I had my therapist, all working with me. And, uh, and I, I feel very safe, I'll just be real honest with you. Um, so, um, also the Proverbs would tell us is listen to advice, accept instruction. It's really big, because we're hard-headed. It says, listen to advice, accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And I know that I'm some 18 months into this, but man, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Because anxiety, don't let the diagnosis define your 
uh, your identity today. Any last words you want to tell us? I think the only other thing I would say is if you aren't sure if you need professional help, find somebody that you trust and just go to them and say like, hey, have you noticed these things about me? Does this sound familiar? I said it earlier, my siblings are two of the most honest people in my <laughs> life. And so maybe you need to go to your siblings and say, is something up with me? Like they might tell you, yeah, you're crazy. Or, you know, you don't know what they're going to say. But I know mine would be like something, like we got to do something. And so maybe it's your siblings if that's who you trust or your spouse. I know my husband would also do the same thing. And so I think sometimes we feel like we're so lonely and we don't have anybody. But there's somebody that you can go and ask, even if it's your boss. I've, I've been a boss before and I would love for my, my people to come and ask me. So it's so okay. So one more time, Anchored in Wellness. Mm -hmm. uh, you can contact them. If, if you're feeling this, love to be able to get in your contact with them. I told first service, if you call our church office, um, we, we have other counselors in the area that we refer to all over from here to Brunswick, Savannah, all over the place that, that we work with as well. If you call our church office, it may start with one of us. And then out from under that, we, we're, we're, we are very serious now about how we handle all of these things. And so what a, what a joy it is uh, to be able to work with people in this. And uh, I'll give you one resource in closing today. Uh, John Deloney. He's a, he has a podcast, John Deloney, it's D-E-L-O-N-E-Y, but uh, he just wrote a book, I'm reading this book, I've already read other books of his, but his book uh, is Building a Non-Anxious Life, because I'm, I'm taking in all the tools I can to, to build a non-anxious life, and it's his latest book, uh, just a great, great book, great resource for you, John Deloney, Building a Non-Anxious Life. Can y'all give Hannah a big hand today? Amen. So where do we go from here? Let's go ahead and stand up this morning. And let's just bow our heads all over the room. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Nobody moving around. Nobody. This is serious today. We've just witnessed people getting baptized, coming into the body of Christ, the family of God worldwide. Um, we've just been able to hear a message on being anxious and most of us have experienced this I would say all of us at some point at some level not putting anything on anyone today but I am going to pray for us today Father I thank you this morning for being with us Lord I just pray today for every person in here today and I ask you would minister to them effectively Father God whatever the need is I would say today I started with this I'll end with it if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, um, that's like step one for you this morning. Um, it is, you know, for you to be able to ask Jesus to be able to be the Lord of your life. And so if that's you this morning, just right there where you are, remember I, I said for, for a believer, a good mental health begins and ends with Jesus. And, but if you don't have Jesus, you know, this morning, there's no better time, no better place than right here to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And if that's you this morning, you say, I've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Just right there where you are, just call on his name. Scripture says, call upon his name that you would be saved. Just say, Jesus, right there where you are, Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Just let him know that. I need your grace to forgive me. I need your love to change me, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me eternity today. But above all else, Jesus, I thank you for your blood. You shed your blood. And it's that blood that washes my sin away. So thank you today for your precious blood that washes my sin away. And Jesus, I thank you today for dying on the cross for me. And right here and right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Which means I'm a Christian. And that you live in me by the power of your Holy Spirit. So I ask today for Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me from here forward as I, as I walk with you, Jesus. And Jesus, I, I belong to you. And I want to live my life for you. Not just now, but forever. Head still bowed, eyes still closed today. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. We want to walk with you. We want to be able to talk with you. Our prayer team will be up front right up here. You can let them know, but we want to let, if you'll let us know on a connection card, we'd love to be able to walk with you and talk with you for the rest of us today. Father, I just pray for us today as we're doing our best to be spiritually healthy, physically healthy, 
an emotionally healthy father. That today, if we're struggling with anxiety that can lead to depression, anxiety that can lead to fear, anxiety that can lead us down many different venues, Lord, that today we would give that to you and we would reach out, God, and ask for help in this, in this arena, Father. God, I thank you for that. I say, Holy Spirit, just move up and down these aisles, ministering to people as we sing this last worship song together. Come in and have your way with us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So these last couple of minutes, I say this a lot, but I'm going to say it today. You know, wait, don't walk out of here. Ask the Lord what he would have for you today. If anxiety, if you don't struggle with that, that's fine. I, I'm, 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 but what does the Lord have? What did you hear the Lord say today? Just for a couple of moments, we'll be in worship. Our worship, our prayer, work, of course, our worship team is up front, but our prayer team is right up front if you need prayer for anything. All of these crosses around the room, they have pens, writing pens and push pens and a piece of paper there. Maybe today's the day that you put that anxiety on the cross and start believing for God to touch you and heal you of, of that. Communion is also present at all the stations if you would like to partake of communion. Uh, love for you to be able to do that. Or you might want to write anxiety on a prayer card that's in the seat back in front of you and turn it in in those black boxes back there or someone in our, uh, one of our ta- uh, guest services table back there. But uh, as we begin to sing today, ask the Lord, God, what are you saying to me in this? As we continue to say over and over and over again that anxiety is just a diagnosis. It's not our identity. So here we go. Let's sing about Jesus being the king of my heart. to play. Prayer team will still be up front up here. Of course, the stations are open. I just want to remind you, if you put anything on a connection card, please turn your connection card in and your connect at the connection table right outside the double doors. Don't forget about Turkey on the Go. I'd love for you to be able to be a part of that um, at any capacity, as well as don't forget about your Operation Christmas boxes. Tuesday by lunch, 
God bless you. Go enjoy this nice, cool fall weather. We love you, D.C. Can't wait to be with you next week as we talk about choosing joy. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord one big glass hand today. Good.